All right, so let's talk about task one. So in the first task, what we'll do is we'll play a game with kids where we show them a character who has a magic cup. And the magic cup will always come and add some more things to a pile. Now what children don't get to see is what's in the cup. What we want to see is whether kids can reason about what must have been added just from seeing the starting number of things and the ending number of things. So let's do that. What you'll need to do this task is a little character. We usually use Gator. This is our lab mascot here, Gator. And he's going to have a magic cup. And what you'll need is a cup that children cannot see through. So the idea is that this cup is our x variable. It, it contains the quantity that's being added, the unknown add end. So we want to make sure kids cannot see through this cup. And then you'll also need a variety of small household items that you can use as the quantities that Gator um, has. Right? So I'll just show you a, a few of the things that we typically use. You can use anything from around the house as long as you stay consistent. So for example, we use pom-poms. So these are just like tiny little pom-poms. We just try to get a variety of different colors. Um, buttons, these are just some uh, buttons from a craft kit. I've got pennies in here. You could use other kinds of coins. Um, these are just some little toy shoes. So you could use things like that. Um, you could use other uh, craft type supplies. Um, anything that you have lying around, marbles, as long as they don't roll all over the place. Um, anything, any, anything that's small and you can fit inside your little cup. So what you'll do is following the guide um, that you have available for you um, to each task, you'll count out the number of objects that you need. So what you'll need for each type of object, you'll need to count out a starting quantity. So depending on what you use, um, each object will have its own different starting quantity. So for the first task, Gator's Magic Cup will add to a pile of five things, then to a pile of nine things, and then to a pile of six things. So you want to count those out at the start of the game. So that's what I've done here. I'm just putting them in these little cups. And then what you'll want to do is um, pre-count out what Gator's Cup is going to add. So in task one, Gator's Cup will always add 12. Now just to remind you that during the study, you don't want to say number words to kids. We really just want to get their approximate sets. So let's go through it. So one thing that you can do, one thing that's nice about using paper cups, is you can pre-count the numbers of things in your cup. So here I have um, shoes, uh, buttons and pennies all counted out, so 12 in each cup, but you don't have to do that. Whatever is most comfortable and easiest for you. What you'll also need is at least one other white cup. So the reason for that is at the very end of the study, how are we going to ask children what they think was in Gator's cup? What we'll do is we'll give them two choices. We'll give them one cup that has 12 in it, so that's the target cup. And we'll give them another cup that has a distractor number. And you can choose what that is from either 4 or 24. So choose a distractor number. The idea behind these cups is that they're otherwise completely identical. We'll show kids what's inside at the very end, and we'll see whether they can choose which cup was Gator's. So let's go through the task. What I'll do is I'll go through it like I would um, a child in the lab, and you can get the sense of the most important things to say to the child, how to run, and how, how the task typically goes. So let's get started. All right, this is my friend Gator. Gator has something really cool. He has a magic cup. And you wanna know what's magic about it? No matter what, if I put a pile of things in front of Gator, his magic cup will come and add some more things to his pile. And it's always going to add the same number of things every time, no matter what. Do you want to see how it works? All right, let's get started. So now watch this. I'm going to put here some buttons in front of Gator, okay? See Gator's buttons? Okay, now watch carefully. Here comes Gator's magic cup. Did it work? Yeah, it worked. See Gator's buttons now? 
All right. So now let's see. Why do you think this magic cup will work on anything else? Let's clean these buttons up. How about pennies? Do you think it'll work on pennies? Let's try it. So here's Gator's magic cup. All right. And I'm going to put a pile of pennies in front of Gator. Okay. See these pennies? Okay, now watch carefully. Here comes Gator's magic cup. Did it work? Yeah, see Gator's pennies now? All right. So I'm going to clean these up and let's see what else can we try Gator's cup on. How about these little shoes? Let's try it. So here's Gator's magic cup. And here's a pile of shoes for Gator. See these shoes? Okay, now watch carefully. Here comes the magic cup. Did it work? Yeah, see Gator's shoes now? Great job. Okay, we'll clean these up. And let's see, I have one more thing for us to try Gator's cup on. How about some pom-poms? All right. Now you take Gator for me and let me get his magic cup. Oh, uh-oh, I found two magic cups under the table, but I don't know which one's Gator's. Can you help me? I'm gonna show you what's inside and you can tell me which one is Gator's magic cup. Ready? Which one's Gator's? So at this point, you can have the child point to which one is Gator's this is the correct answer in this case. You can put Gator by the cup. You can say, now ask your child, why do you think this one's Gator's? Now, regardless of what answer they choose, they may choose the wrong answer. That's totally interesting. Ask them what, why they chose what they chose. They may be using some heuristics or rules that are simpler, easier for them. So give, ask them, what, what were they thinking? What did they do? What were they thinking when they made that decision? How did they make that decision? A lot of times what we hear is children will say things like, because it has more, or because it has less, or because Gator always added that amount. Ask your child what they thought and see what they say. It'll always be really, really interesting. So just a few things to keep in mind when you're doing this task. So it's always good to have everything close at hand, but out of view so that kids can't see what's going on under the table. Now, that's, at home, that's not always going to be possible. Kids are going to be running around. But just as much as you can, try to keep everything clear so that we have an area that's kind of free of distraction. If that's not possible, that's OK. Just let us know. Let us know what you did. One other thing to keep in mind is that you, as the adult, when you bring up these two cups for our test trial, whoops, when you bring up these two cups, you're going to know which one is correct. It's really hard to not, for example, reveal and look at the one that's the correct pile. In science, in any sort of research, we always have to be aware of our own biases. So as experimenters, we want to be sure to be completely neutral. We want to make sure that we don't give children any cues about what's the right answer. That allows us to really tap what they know and not necessarily what we know. So just a few things to keep in mind. So you'll do this basic task again one more time with slightly different numbers. So you can consult your um, task run guide to find out which numbers to do. Um, again, the magic cup will be adding some things to piles of 5, 6, and 9, but this time it's going to add 20. And your distractor cup will always have 10. Now, that's just a slightly different version. It allows us to repeat the game again with children and see how they do the second time around, but it's also a little bit more difficult. The number 10 and the number 20 are pretty different, but they're not quite as different as, say, 4 and uh, 12. So we want to see whether kids can kind of do it when the numbers are a little bit closer. 